Hello and welcome to Sunday School with Mrs. Aboro. Now children, before we delve into today's lesson, I would like us um, to get clear the answer to question 5 of last Sunday's quiz. Many of us didn't get it correctly. Here is the question. As Jesus was transfigured, his clothes became dash. Many went for the first option, but the correct answer is actually the second. Yes, I believe you all saw that in the um, feedback um, tool on the form sheet. Now, um, different translations use different words to describe how Jesus' clothes um, were. Some say dazzling white, others as bright as a flash of lightning like the one we used, um, yet others white and glistering and blinding white. The word snow wasn't used at all, so that made that um, um, option wrong. The current answer is the second option, okay? All right. Today, um, we're going to start off with a little opposite game. Mm, opposites are reverse of um, something. If it isn't this, it is that. So what is the opposite of young? It is old. Opposite of hot? Cold. Opposite of happy? Of course, if you're not happy, you're sad. Opposite of big? Small. Opposite of dead? Alive. And the opposite of reward? Punishment. You're not rewarded, you'll be punished. The gospel reading sort of um, talks about um, some things that are opposites. Today is the third Sunday of Lent, yes, and um, the gospel is from Luke chapter 13, verse 1 to 9. Here we hear a parable about God's love and patience. We hear Jesus preaching a message of repentance that is turning from doing wrong to doing right. You see the opposite there? wrong right so that we will not die so that we will leave so that we will be rewarded and not punished remember to repent is to be sorry for the wrong things you have done okay and turn to make them right so we hear in the uh, in the gospel reading how patient god is without with us how god never gives up on us now let us pay attention to the gospel reading the parable of the barren fig tree are you interested children Yes, Uncle Yesh, go ahead. One day, Jesus was preaching to a very large crowd when some of them told him about some Galileans killed by Pilate. Do you think that because of Galileans suffered and died today, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Silovum fell on them? Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Listen carefully to this parable I'm telling you. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here. For three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Okay, I hope we heard their voices were bass like. <laughs> okay, a quick review now. Now, Jesus told a parable about um, the orchard owner and the gardener. An orchard is a garden of fruit or nut trees, yes, as you can see. Mm -hmm. And so the orchard owner is one who owns a garden of fruit trees and the gardener is one who cares for it, okay? Now, Jesus uses some um, parables to speak to people in his time. And what are parables again? Earthly stories with heavenly meanings, yes. Now, people came to Jesus and were telling Jesus that, oh, Pilate, Pilate killed some people, you know, and then Jesus was telling them, do you think that these people are worse or, or the people that um, the tar in Salem fell on, do you think they are worse sinners? No, he said, if you do not repent, you will perish. Those are opposite words. If you do not repent, you will perish. And so he decided to tell them a parable to further explain to them what he was saying. And so in this parable, the orchard owner 
came seeking for fruit from the trees, from the fruit trees he planted, the fig tree. But he found none, so he went to the gardener and asked that the tree be cut down. He said he had been coming to the tree for three years, you know, expecting to get a fruit, but found none. And so the tree should be cut. But the gardener asked that it be left for another year, that he was going to tend to it, add manure, you know, fertilize it, you know, something to make it grow better so that it can bear fruit. And the gardener told the orchard owner, if it doesn't after a year, then you can cut it down. Now, what does this mean? The orchard owner is God. The fig tree, you and I, and the gardener, Jesus. Now, the, the orchard owner, God, expects us to do the right things. Okay? We are the fig tree. At times, we don't bear the right fruits we should be bearing, you know. But Jesus is there pleading in our behalf, asking God to be patient with us. And you see what, where patience comes in? God is patient with us, okay? But it's very important, children, that we don't push God's patience, okay? Yes, that God is calling us to change, to do the right things. It is also within his power to punish us when we make wrong choices. But he is merciful. He delays his punishment punishment just like he delayed um just like the orchard owner delayed cutting down the tree immediately he gave it another year so god delays his punishment and tends to us so that we may bear the fruit he desires okay Yes, that's what God wants. He's not hasty about punishing. He wants us to do the right things. He wants to give us a reward. He wants to give us life. He doesn't um, want us to die. That will not be pleasing to him. So you see, God is patient with us. And Jesus is there telling the Lord to please give us time. Okay, so you see, if we don't do the right things, we get um, we, we will be punished. Okay, we won't be rewarded. Many of us get um, um, punished in school at home when we do the wrong things isn't it yes but sometimes we do wrong we're not punished immediately we may be warned and we may be given time to make the right decision to make the right choices to do the right things okay yes that's what our parents do our teachers do our loved ones do they don't just punish us all the time they give us time to make the right choice to do the right things okay yes but they get um they punish us sometimes when they have warned us severally and we do not take heed so they punish us okay so sometimes punishment comes when we do not listen and that is what god is avoiding he doesn't want us to go to hell he wants us to go to heaven and so he's telling us now on time to do the right things to repent so that we will not perish that was what jesus was trying to explain to the people that the people that have died they are not worse sinners we, he's only telling them those of them are alive now to better change their ways so that they will have life okay children so so what this parable is saying is that God is patient with us, okay? He doesn't want us to perish. He doesn't want us um, to be punished. He wants us to be rewarded. He wants us to make the right choices and live. He doesn't want us to go to hell. Does anybody want to go to hell? I don't think so. We all want to make heaven. So we must do the right things. Keep the commandments. Okay. We see in the first reading that God gave Moses the commandment. So we're supposed to keep these laws. Keep the commandment. Keep the commandment of love as well. Especially this season of Lent. Let us take our memory verse. It is from Luke chapter 13 verse 5 and it says, But I tell you, if you don't change your heart and leave, you will all be destroyed. Some translations will say, you will perish if you do not repent. Let us pray. Oh dear Father, thank you for forgiving us our sins. Help us to bear the fruits you expect us to bear. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We come to the end of today's Sunday School. Jesus loves you and he cares for you. Till next Sunday, it is bye from Mrs. Saboro. Stay blessed.